I'm not really sure if he's the same with other African countries, but mostly with Zim school, with Zim parents, uh, they always prioritize um, giving their students going abroad for universities. So in those instances, they want the child to have like a strong application for, this, for them to get a scholarship. And the only way they can do that is like when they have a strong curricular uh, that they yeah. do have and debating contributes much. So when parents have, when you have conversations with parents and tell them like the importance of it, then they become like cool and say, okay, um, as long as you can reassure me that they are not going to be affected. Team Zimbabwe won a lot of people's hearts at, at Vietnam WSDC. And then anytime Zimbabwe was mentioned, whether at breaks, whether at um, closing ceremony you had, almost every single person chanting Team Zimbabwe, Team Zimbabwe. Um, when you heard it, how did it make you feel? Just a side note. I don't know how I felt. Or I really don't know. Because I think it's just like a situation where I'm like, okay, how did we become people's favorite? I, I yeah. think that, that that's a question. So, like, when I was having a chat with my coaches as well, I'm like, okay, like, what did you guys give these people? Because it's just really surprising, you know, because literally, like, the, it, this thing started, like, on arrival, yeah? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I was having a chat with my coaches, and, like, oh, yeah, we just arrived right now. We had kids from Israel coming to us, and um, I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't know about the other country that they that, that they have in a chat with. Like, oh, yeah, you know, we, we had these kids coming to us, telling us, like, oh, you guys, like, inspire us a lot. I'm like, how do we inspire them? Like, we have never debated with them, um, you know, and, like, this is, like, a whole new team altogether. So it was really, really confusing to me. And then till a point where I'm, like, I'm just seeing, like, this happening more and more with the breaks. It happens like throughout, you know, like people just chanting and chanting. So I, I wasn't really sure how to feel about it. So I was just like, okay, this is like great, yes, but yeah, I don't know whether she will be happy. Or <laughs> I don't know how to feel, to be honest. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, having almost every single person behind an African country and just feeling happy, sharing sharing the joy in that success and the progress, I think to some extent must have had an impact on the confidence of the kids at the time as well, because then they see an atmosphere where they feel much more welcome and feel much more seen and appreciated within that context. Personally, I was like, I don't know, I had this emotional meltdown when I just saw every single person at, at those gatherings sharing Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, because we rarely see some of these things happen. Even for them to throw their stance behind any team at all, not to talk of behind an African team within that particular scenario, and it was really, really inspiring to see. So uh, I'm sure all of us would also wish to get to Team Zimbabwe status in popularity in, in major competitions. Yeah, but Masharia, um, just to bring you in here, one of the biggest challenges we've had in Africa is network. And I know this is probably funny, but um, especially for national school teams, um, national teams, right, for WSDC, you know, you have speakers spread across various regions, various aspects of the country, and you may not, um, you like we, we've just discussed funding challenges, you won't be able to camp all of them, and sometimes the schedule will not even allow you for you to camp them through a very long period of time. So you have to resort to a lot of online trainings throughout the year to then build up this squad even before a major competition such as the BSDC. One of the challenges we've had generally in Africa is network connectivity. Um, even before we come to the behavior of schools and their rules about the usage of technological devices to join Zoom calls and all that, even when you have that, having access to stable network to join these Zooms to have a smooth training experience it's very, very difficult. And a lot of the time we've seen this disrupt major um, training plans and training strategies for African um, countries. How significant a factor has this been in Kenya's story in terms of trying to get a much more consistent training approach to build the kind of talent that you have? Um, maybe I can speak about this because I've had... Um, I coached this year, but in the other years I was a team manager and I used to manage okay. the team 
call people for training. I used to be the one who organizes the trainings, even send them for competitions and everything. Maybe to be completely honest, over the past two years, it's not been a major issue, but before it was, and I'll explain why, because it's very significant to what we were saying before. Yeah. One, um, many times uh, the network issues are caused by different people being in different locations, and you must do this. Yeah. Those are times in Kenya in 2021, we had a student who was a refugee, and he used okay. to debate from Kakuma refugee camp. Anybody wow. who knows that is, where that is, it was like in the most remote part of the country, in like the corner of Kenya and South Sudan, and he was a South Sudanese refugee. And whenever I would go for training, like we used to understand like there's a very high possibility this guy wouldn't be able to make it, but he would do his best to do it. It's such yeah. a huge problem that you cannot be able to host anything. You cannot yeah. send kids to a tournament. You cannot have yeah. training because if one or two kids are not able to access internet, then there's no yeah. point. And at that point, everything was online. So at that point, I think it was a huge challenge for us. Even had to talk to WSDC, who are very understanding the outcome that I have one kid who is from a refugee camp and there's a very high chance in between the round they might cut out. So just increase the rules or give them more time to rejoin because they're just in a very remote area. So we've had yeah. these challenges before. But here's a weird part of this conversation, which is that because of the shift now from WSDC being online to being physical, as I think some of us have conceded, we are ending up choosing kids who can be able to afford these things more. So when yeah. you're choosing kids that can afford this more, I've found that in the last two years, it's probably less likely this happens because every child has stable internet, a good laptop, and Wi-Fi. Yeah. So it's become less of a problem now than it was okay. then. It was online, accessible, and I can pick anyone uh, based on their skill rather than based on their ability to afford. Now that I'm picking people based on their ability to afford, it's less of a problem. Maybe to address the question of schools and how schools address this, yeah. I wouldn't like teams are adopting very militant approaches to recruitment because what yeah. ends up happening is that like from our position we don't accept any students who are borders just in general okay. we don't okay. accept any borders on the team because if you're a border okay. in a public school you're never going to yeah. be able to over the week you're never going to be yeah. able to attend competitions over the weekend so yeah. all these borders are now locked out of debate because international team because you can't train so it's mm -hmm. become a huge problem and i think when we start that conversation about schools it's a very important conversation because how many people are we leaving out because yeah. they're in body they don't have phones yeah. or laptop and they are not going to be able to train so we are picking private school day kids in igcse cambridge uh curriculums because those are the ones who are available and their yeah. schools allow them to go with their laptops and whatever's to school. They can have training in the evening and do tournaments over the weekend. So it's a very interesting shit. And it's elitist. So it's a problem that yeah. we need to have a solution. Yeah. But it's the it's it is what it is right now. Yeah. And um just to bring you in Macy here before we go to Elisha, for me, my personal experience with debate, um, coming from a background which doesn't fit any of these descriptions about going to private schools, being a day student, being able to afford these um, extreme standards to get access to debating to this point. Having debating in a way that could prioritize talent, regardless of your economic background, was very influential in where I am today, right? And the kind of experiences I've had. So if we are having WSDC, which is trying to target talent at the high school level, trying to give exposure and trying to build up these skills at the high school level, having to structurally exclude this significant number of people um, who we know characterize the larger population of African kids who happen to go to public schools, who happen to go to um, boarding schools, or who may live in areas where they may struggle to find these internet connections. They may not even have a phone if they are, they, they are day students or something of that sort. And with the way in which parental culture with having access to these gadgets, especially for a lot of kids within these cultural contexts is. Isn't this becoming a bigger problem and uh, an alarming one at that, that we need to start finding ways to make African WSDC standard, but still accessible for a lot of people? 
Yeah, I do agree that it's a problem and we need to find a solution. But the thing is, it's very, very difficult to do that. Yeah. Um, especially like with, I think Machara already mentioned like that when it comes to boarding schools, the reason why it's difficult is because you can't coach them, you can't do much. So in as yeah. much as you really want to include them in your, in your training sessions, but you can't have someone that probably trains once a month when everyone yeah. else yeah. is maybe more. So it's yeah. very, very difficult. And like, you know, like there's that kind of dilemma that exists to say, I want to be like as inclusive as I can, but at the same time, you're asking yourself like, if I'm being inclusive and then I'm damaging the team, what's the point? So yeah. I don't know what strategies can be done to just like make sure we're as inclusive, but at the same time not damaging the team. And I think like I, it's almost all countries uh, that I know so far. I'm not so sure if any other countries different. I I think Ghana is the same strategy as well that they don't do borders. Yeah. I, I, Zim as well, we just don't do borders. Um, if you're a border, if you unless your school gives you like permission, like written and then write to us. Uh, we had one girl uh, this year who was a border um, and the school had to write that letter to us and say, we are going to uh, support the student. Um, so just tell us your training hours. And if the class may be like, with, uh, sometimes like, you know, boarding schools, like they have a lot of like events, like sometimes they say, oh, we have like this, whatever event that they do have, but that is non-academic. So they say, if like we have that, then we can support the child to come for training. So if there is that kind of like agreement between the coaches in the school, then we are very happy to do that. But some schools, they yeah. don't really want to budge. They just like say the school time is school time. If they want to attend training, yeah, they have to do it on their own time, which is very, very difficult uh, on our end. So we try, but really it's really not that easy. So the same thing with public schools with funding as well. Yeah, so uh, uh, like this year, uh, we had it's not a, it's, it's, so we had one school that was able to fund one of the speakers, but not every school is able to do that. So in public schools, they can't fund; they they don't want to help with fundraising. So we did approach some of the schools and say, okay, so since you can't fund, just help us with fundraising. We give them like a, strategies. Do a civic day, for example, and charge every kid maybe one dollar. If you have one thousand kids, you have one thousand dollars. That is going to be contributory towards like one of the students that you have in terms of attending. They said no. We already have like these events happening in place. So like they are really, really not supportive um, yeah. to come with their students. So it's very difficult as well to try to be as inclusive. We try our best, but it's not easy. I think Masara already explained like how it's easy to work with private schools. I think like those uh, Cambridge schools, they are really, really like supportive. They really like appreciate the kind of way that, that they're putting so it's more of like them like just supporting you they allow the students to attend training they allow students to attend tournaments so even like when we say we have to attend a tournament and then i just write an email to the school head and say oh can i have the student over the weekend we have this tournament the response doesn't even take time and within an, an hour there's a response and say we're going to execute the student uh so as long as the parent is aware uh, the parent can also send us an email and then I just talk to the parent and like I have talked to the school they ask you to send an email to them so like there's that kind of like the rapport that we have from private schools is completely different from the rapport that you get from public yeah. school uh you know so and even boarding schools is completely different uh, and most boarding schools are church schools and yeah they can't make the child miss the, the Sunday mass for a debate that's not that's not gonna work so it's those kind of things you try to be inclusive but there are no mechanisms that help you, you know, so it's very difficult. Yeah, I, I mean, um, this is a, a very interesting part of the conversation. I've really enjoyed this conversation throughout, but it, it's ah, a, a little bit disheartening to see some of the sacrifices we've had to be making um, to then get the quality up there. Because I'm sure for all of us, um, like Miss Miss highlighted, entering this space to try to be a coach to want to coach a high school team, your biggest passion would be to be as inclusive as possible. But if that then starts to hurt the quality of the output of the team, then you are forced to rethink which of these priorities you would give, right? So um, maybe we would have another, another discussion where we really just brainstorm how to fix some of these issues. But yeah, for now, putting this out there, I think 
we all as a continent, as even as debaters, just listening to this, hearing this episode, need to start thinking about what we all can do and what can we do? Is it by sharing, um, for instance, uh, crowdfunding posts? Is it by aggressively pushing um, supporting these teams, regardless of the country you come from, um, just to build a collective support system? Even if you don't have the money to support, if it's just every single day sharing these crowdfunding posts, just reaching out to your followers on Facebook or friends or something. I think these are some of the things that as individuals we can try doing to then push up these things that would end up having quality and inclusion um, um, meeting at the veg that we would want them to meet. I know, Elisha, you are dying to contribute on boarding school because you have a very, very, very distasteful experience with some of these uh, boarding schools in, in Ghana. But tell us, what has your experience been? Because you really want to say something about this. So, yeah, I, I like the way May says, oh, Ghana doesn't do boarding schools. Yes, because we keep on saying we are not going to boarding schools. Then we end up doing boarding schools. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> unfortunately, we said we weren't going to do boarding schools, but we did boarding schools. And the interesting thing is that the kids that ended up coming to all schools, two of them were day students, and the other one was a boarding school student who was out of school a month and then two weeks before world. So we ended up bringing day students anyway, or school students that are not in the boarding house anyway. And the boarding school thing was a bit stressful. Not just a bit stressful, like really, really stressful. I think I'm understating. Because Andrew did join me um, um, as, as a coach for Team Ghana uh, as we continued like the training. Um, and I remember when, when we were going for the US Nationals, all the kids were boarding school students, right? Mm -hmm. And you would call a meeting every evening and no one would show up. And maybe like in the morning around 6 a.m., 7 a.m., they'll text you and be like, oh, our teacher who was supposed to give us the phone wasn't in the house. And we sat in, <laughs> we waited for a long time and the teacher never came. And uh, it's just also a conversation of like you're working with kids and kids are very interesting, right? Because there's this situation where they're in the boarding house and everyone is going to something we call entertainment, right? In Ghana, where yeah. they have like fun and all of that or there's like some other events happening on campus and they are supposed to tell their friends and their entire class that, oh, I'm not going to go for entertainment today. I'm going to go sit in a Zoom call with other people from other schools. Lots of kids are not going to do that. We had this one single experience where we went to the school. So Eric and I do this thing where we visit the schools and consistently try to have a relationship with the teachers and the headmasters and whatnot. We went to the school and this teacher in charge of debate says, oh, this boy that you selected for Team Ghana, I've been calling him to come and train every day and he keeps on giving me stories. And I'm like, what? And he, Whoa. like, we had to fight this boy. He finally comes. And the other problem is that the teacher's bungalow has bad network, right? And you can't, like push them to tell the teachers to fix their network as compared to asking them and their parents to fix their own network at home. So the boarding house situation is so stressful. And like, we are really, really going to be very, very strict on some of these rules, as I've already mentioned, as we get into 2024, which is really sad because, for example, my high school, which is in like, Someone from Ghana may chuckle when they listen to this in the future. My high school, which is the best high school in the country and the best at debating, the record. <laughs> I, 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 I am not just. I am not just making this up. Like the record. <laughs> my high school is a predominant, a predominantly boarding facility. So there are more boarding yeah. house students than day students. I didn't mention the name of the school. It's the Presbyterian <laughs> Boys Secondary School, Legon. Sick, right? <laughs> I had to mention it. My point is, like, what that means is that most of the good speakers that we go in there and train are probably going to miss out because we have a very strict quota for day students and even for boarding houses. We can only work with schools like Presec because, like, I can literally walk into Presec. Presec is 15 minutes away from my house, 10 minutes away from my campus, right? So I can literally walk in there. But for schools in like the northern part of Ghana, 
I can't I can't do anything about it. I I can't reach anyone over there as I want to. So it's a very sad situation. But as May said, do you want to be so diverse to the point where it hits the team? The answer is no. So then you're kind of stuck with like working with what you have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, we've been talking about some of the challenges for so long. I think nearing the end, we need to have some fun discussions just to give people a, a cool ease out of the listening to this episode. So, I mean, I've had my own share of these experiences and I'm going to ask around, let's go around the table, each and everyone. If I'm to ask you to give me two of your most fascinating WSDC training experience in the sense of, what did you hear uh, one of your trainees say as a coach that strikes you and you're like, I've never thought of this this way before. I mean, you you are just in awe about the extent of brilliance that these kids used to think about whatever they were saying at the point. I just want two instances from everyone. I'll share mine after you you all are done. So let's start from Macheria. Give me two of these instances. Um, yeah, I've, I don't know if I can get two, but I've had some interesting experiences dealing with kids so yeah. the first one i think this was one of my most interesting moments was about child psychology and how they think about training and coaches so yeah. throughout our entire wsdc experience we were very nice to the kids we used to encourage them even when they lose we are just like oh you did your best you know we are very caring loving yeah. coaches who are like hugs and you know we were so so nice to the children and i remember after wsdc round three one of two or three of the students ganged up and they came to us at night and they were like you people are too nice i need you to be <laughs> and i need you to be putting me under pressure and i need you Whoa. to tell me fact in this round and i was like what you want me to be rude to you and they're like yes that's how we work we want you to be mean we want you to be a coach we want you to be rough sometimes of course not overdo it but they were like you know you need to balance the yin and the yang you can't be yeah. nice all the time we need tough love at that moment they had lost i think it was round four and they had only won one out of three rounds and so i okay. sat them down that evening and i put them in the dormitory and i scolded them for two hours i let out like a year's worth of <laughs> like all my anger and all my disappointment. Oh. <laughs> and I told them how they are not killers and they are not winners. They're an embarrassment to their nation. Their parents have probably wasted their... I was tough on them, guys. I, I ripped them apart for like... Wow. Like, you know, it was supposed to be a 15-minute conversation. It ended up being one hour plus of me just wow. ripping. I did a team distraction. Then I went speaker by speaker. It was like a whip speech. I was like, I'm going to destroy you all today. <laughs> and I kid you not, and I, I'm not using my words, the next four rounds, because WSDC has eight rounds, they won yeah. three out of four. And the wow. one that they lost, like immediately after that round, after my scolding, my conclusion of the scolding was, if you lose another round, don't look at me. Don't even talk to me. Like, like I'm not even your coach anymore. <laughs> you should not even lock eyes. Like your disappointment. <laughs> and anyway, I know it was a bit tough. I, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit. It wasn't that mean. But the point <laughs> it was one of the most interesting experiences of my life. When the yeah. kids actually came to us and told us, Masharia, we want you to be rough. You guys have been too nice. We need you to also show us the rough side. And I went, I went out. So and they won. So I was like, now nah, I've learned as a coach and I've grown. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I can't be nice all the time. I need to like yeah. sometimes these kids and say, you know, you guys were trash. So like, yeah, just take it and move on. Yeah. So that was number one. Uh, the only other interesting experience that I think the kids have have had is. I think I learned that kids are so nice and they're so caring. There was a time that they actually brought all the coaches out, took us out several times, like over the year where we don't even do anything. They just call us out, take us, buy us food, buy us, like, you know, just have a fun time with us. Wow. And they pay for it and then go home. So that was another interesting experience that I was like, sometimes these kids have very nice hearts and uh, 
you want to maintain that I don't know purity or that really yeah. really in that innocence that they're really nice people and some of these kids have been the best we've ever seen. So two experiences. I mean, this may be petty of me, but of all that you said, the key word I picked was sometimes they can be nice, which means the other times that they are not. This oh is just no, yeah. no that is another story. <laughs> kids are rough. Guys, these kids <laughs> that's a whole podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Things. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, so, Elisha, to you here, I mean, Team Ghana, what are the two wow moments you experienced with them? So I just want to say that the round where Mashara said if they don't win, he's not talking to them anymore was the round against Ghana. So <laughs> after the round, I remember I just walked away from my kids and I sat on the floor in the, in the hallway and I'm sitting on the floor and the kids, like the, 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 the Ghanaian kids, don't even want to walk toward me because I had said exactly the same words Mashaya said to the Kenyan team, to them. And I didn't even know Mashaya had said this to the Kenyan kids. So I'm still wow. on the floor. And Mashaya comes to me and he's like, he's concerned about the round. And I'm like, no, Mashaya, you've won the round. I'm concerned about my kids because I told them not to talk to me. And Mashaya says, I told my kids the same thing. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? Anyway, talking about like kids saying, don't be mean. I remember two weeks before um, uh, Wilt. Yeah. We have this specific speaker that's like really bright. She's really good. She's our second speaker. And she gave a speech. And when she was done giving the speech, I gave her like three other ways to go around the same motion with like three yeah. different cases and then she texts me and she's like um elisha i'm like hello how are you what's up please i need honest feedback and i'm like what is honest feedback like why do you think i'm lying to you and she's like you're not mean enough and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> like, same thing as much. i'm like what do you mean i'm not mean enough so <laughs> i told her that I don't think you want to see me mean, but if you if you want that, if if it is the right time, I'm going to give you that, right? Yeah. So this girl um, comes to Worlds and has like two bad rounds because we lost first two rounds, and then in the evening when we got there, I'm like, guys, you are going to sleep for one hour. We are going to wake, wake up and train, and when we, we we woke up, I just spoke. I don't even know how long I spoke for, but I spoke for a long time, right? Yeah. So we're going to the next round the next day and we lose another round. And after tasting me like being a mean person once, this girl developed a coping mechanism. So after every round, by the time we walk out and we walk to the place where I'm going to talk to them alone, she already has a list of all the wrong things she did. So before I even <laughs> speak, <laughs> she's like, Elijah, I know. We should have responded to this. We should have responded to that. <laughs> my case, I didn't impact it properly. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on here? So I remember we lost the round again. Right. Estonia. Was it around yeah. seven or something? And she started, and I'm like, hold up, hold up. No, no. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. You keep on saying you know what you did wrong. So why did you do it? Like, why did you do what's it? What's going yeah. on? Right, and, and I was it was really interesting. Like they found ways to escape. Like even though they claim they want accountability, they are also finding ways to escape that accountability, which is a very funny situation. Cause it's like you tell me you want honest feedback, and I'm giving you very honest feedback because we are at the comp, I'm watching the rounds, and I'm writing things. And now you don't even let me. I, I don't even start talking, and they already have like what they did wrong, and I'm like, no. I think the other thing for me. And I'm not going to get into the specific um, details because kids can be very, very funny sometimes. But yeah. it's about um, culture and sensitivity. Kids yeah. say anything. <laughs> I get sure about yeah. all the things they say. And yeah. most of the time, 
for us on, on the African continent, because of the conservative nature of the, this, the continent, these kids don't even know that they are saying things that are politically incorrect. So you're not just training kids to like be good debaters, you're training kids to find ways to say things that are politically yeah. correct when they're debating, because yeah. they will say the things in a very raw way, and you're going to be like behind your screen during training, and you're like, what? What's going on? <laughs> I remember we did the tournaments, like um, the Canadian tournament online, and I yeah. called some of the other people in the Team Ghana administration. So Eric Abna, um, Catherine, all joined yeah. to listen to the round. And they texted me asking me, is this what I've been listening to for like a couple of rounds? And I'm like, yes, this is exactly what I've been listening to. These kids have the weirdest examples. And it's, it's a very interesting thing. Like, and, and it also reminds me of myself, because I'm going to say this, like I was not completely conservative, but I was pretty conservative when I joined Team Ghana. Um, <laughs> this may be funny, but my team was pretty conservative to the point that Eric brought a team of feminists to our training, <laughs> like banter with us <laughs> at training, just to make us understand what feminism is and why feminism was important. I mean, all of those things are life changing. So every time yeah. these kids do these things, I'm like, this is me in 2017 and 2016 again. Now I need to teach these kids like this is not something that they should do. And it's very yeah. interesting. Like my kids had cultural a cultural shock in at some instances in Vietnam. They saw other kids do something and they're like, oh, we can do that. I'm like, yeah, you can. And they're like, oh, we didn't know. I'm like, well today you know but don't go do that in your mother's house right so yeah i think those two things are like the 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 things that really were interesting for me as, as a coach yeah yeah miss uh one moment with team zimbabwe two key two key uh scenarios for us um for me i don't know honestly i think that one common denominator is like what material in the last state it's just like yeah, kids just approaching you and saying some crazy things. So, like, most of the kids that, like, that are part of the national team this year, yeah. we have been in the academy team uh, for, okay. like, two, three years. So, um, there's a round that they went against Sheikh. It was round six. And that round yeah. was live streamed um, on Facebook. Uh, the kids did some things in that round. <laughs> So after they finished the debate and everything went on, um, you know, I haven't said anything to them yet. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, just days goes on. And then later on in the evening, one of the speakers texts me. Um, and then he says, Mace, you have changed. This is not the Mace that I know. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then <laughs> it's like the Mace that I know would you have said something about that round? I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to call you guys. And then I called them uh, in the evening. I was having a chat. And like, the first thing I say to them, and like, they were already laughing because they knew what I was going to say. <laughs> the first thing I said to them was like, you guys left evidence. You have left <laughs> evidence there because that video is not going to be deleted. <laughs> and everyone that watched the video <laughs> is going to say, is this the team Zimbabwe? <laughs> <laughs> So it was one of those situations where, like, the speakers themselves are like, you need to say something about it. And yeah. I talked with them. I told them, I'm like, guys, Sheikh was not, like, a powerful team. But you guys just gave them the debate. You, you just literally gave them the debate. It was just like saying, okay, Sheikh, just win. And what made me angry? And I, you know, like, the things, I end up, like, being angry with them. And I was like, yeah. you guys, you came from winning rounds against South Africa. You won yeah. round, you, 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 you lost like on a close call to Australia. You lost on a close call yeah. to Pakistan. Like these are countries that are giving you so much, you know, in terms of like the competition. Yeah. Czech is a good team, but the way in which like they structured their case there wasn't like that powerful compared to the team that they've went against in the previous rounds. And I was yeah. like, it was really sad. I'm like, you guys could have lost the round, yes, but losing the round, maybe like arguing for the right motion, you know, I'm like, you guys, you, you had your own motion, you guys created your own motion, and then you just argue, you know, Shrek was going to win, if you guys, I, I would have understood, if you guys argued yeah. the right motion, so I had a chat with them about it, and then just like get a chat, and then like, and you know, like those kind of things, but the thing is like, they were like, yeah, but 
is you still think this is not the maze, but you know, because I, I was still nice about it and they're just saying it's kind of like, oh yeah, you guys can just like yeah. go and do this, you know. Um, you know, so because they wanted the mean maze. I think like none of you guys have met the maze that the kids are talking about. Uh, so there's that maze where they t- it doesn't take any nonsense. <laughs> so, Can I say something on that? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. No lies. I have talked to Team Zimbabwe. They are terrified of me. It's like, there's no one who scares them more in their lives than Mason. Like, those kids wow. are like, I would rather be on anybody's wrong side than Mason. Like, once Mason starts on those kids, they are terrified. Those kids, you ask them about me, it's like they tremble. <laughs> like, what do you do to these kids in training? Maybe it has, like, you know, there's a relationship between being tough to kids and success because <laughs> yo, those kids are terrified of me. I hear me kicks them out anyway. Let me not talk. But it, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's really, really tough to them. So I agree with the kids that Miss was out of character. So that was the contribution <laughs> I wanted to make. Sure, this, sure. Yeah, I, I think I think my career is right to some degree. You know, like they, they went like I ran the game in South Africa as well. So after the round, I just say, so like because I wasn't there physically with them, but I was watching the yeah. debate. So I just sent them like, oh guys, good job. Yeah. And then like the same shocked because there was only a call. It was a video call. I'm like, you guys look shocked that I said good job in that round. It's like, like what's happening here? You know, because in non- in most instances, I I always tell them, like, you guys won the round, but that yeah. was enough. Yes, yeah, yeah. I always yeah. tell them like you guys can do better. But in that round against South Africa, to be honest, I think they went a far mile. You know, I'm like, I have never seen this before in my life. Like these kids yeah. are so amazing, you know. And I was really trying to be nice. And the thing is, when I try to be nice, they say this is not You're true, out of character. You know? yeah. And it becomes very difficult for me. So, but yeah, this yeah. was one of the situations that I had with the kids. Um yeah, but to be honest, also like I, I'm a nice person. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm a nice person. Um, I don't know if there's anything else uh, that was wowing. Um, uh, the, probably like the kids being nice. So yeah, kids have honestly done some nice things. Um, you know, for me, uh, I, particularly, I think uh, if you guys notice, like I, I can say with Menzi, for example, has been part of like um the team for yeah. Uh, I don't know, ages, yeah? So uh, I, I've had that situation where kids probably, you know, I wouldn't expect it because the way in which, like, as Machara said, the way in which, like, the kids uh, think I'm um, that, you know, uh, yeah, crazy person. But, like, they always do some appreciative things, you know, sometimes, like, you know, I, I don't even know how to respond and how to react. Uh, like, they give you a card and, like, oh, yeah, we have this card yeah. that's yeah. for you. Uh, you know, we're really appreciative. To be honest with you, I don't know how to react to those things. I'm like, yeah. you can eat. So you, you can't yeah, be seen yeah. to giving me a card or giving me chocolates. But I do appreciate as well, like the kind of like rapport that I have with them. So it's more of like, um, I put it on the ground and like, okay, guys, we need to work. But at the same time, they know that even if I'm too harsh sometimes, um, I always want what's best for them. And it yeah, always yeah. works out. Uh, uh, so it's not like, uh, 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 yeah, uh, there's a difference there between being too harsh and like uh, to, you know, going an extra mile and like yeah. making them yeah. like, oh my God, like I can't do photo, I can't attend training because Mace is going to do this. Like they, they're still eager to attend training. And yeah. what makes them eager is because they know that if they are late for training with one, one, just one minute, they are not training today. They, yeah. There's no training. Training is only for people that are on the call. If I say training is at 7 p.m., training is at 7 p.m. So I'm also teaching them about like the life skills to say, if you're going for a job, you know, I always tell them, I always give them this example. I'm like, if you're going for a job, yeah, is it, if your job starts at 8 a.m., you need to be there at 8 a.m. If you're not there, yeah. probably you're running late, you need to call and explain why you're running late. This is also applicable to debating. So I always tell them those kind of things and they're really appreciative. So I'm not really sure if it's a wow moment, but I think what stands out there is because they also take that, you know, sometimes like future, like the people that I've had um, in the national team before saying, oh, that was really helpful. You know, I'm still applying these things in the life. So, yeah. So it's those kind of situations really, you know, that's 
also yeah. make me make my heart cool down a bit, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, those those experiences are nice. I've also had quite a, a few wow experiences. Um, I think, for instance, with Team Ghana, I saw them uh, do who is most likely to do this um, uh, an episode for for Instagram. And they were discussing the coaches, myself, Elisha, and then Eric, who is most likely to do this, who is most likely to do that. And then, I mean, everything they said about Eric and Elisha is true. But for <laughs> mine, I was shocked because there was like, who is most likely to call you on the call at 10 p.m. and tell you that your research wasn't enough? And everybody <laughs> said, <laughs> me. And I was like, guys, I don't do this <laughs> because I know that's a typical trait of Elisha. Elisha will call a meeting 1 a.m. in the midnight and tell you, we need to do this, right? But, I mean, mm -hmm. that just um, sparked some, some form of, record, um, what do you call it, realization about the kind of process I've been taking them through. Because I'm very particular with research, details, getting a lot of evidence, backing your logic with facts rather than just relying on logic to claim a lot of things. And so it was really, really intriguing just seeing them note how peculiar I was with, with research. But there was another one where I think, I think this is more like quite a while back. Um, there was a debate about whether people should be born or not. So like you prefer not to be born. And somebody was making a case about, well, this life is harsh. And so if you are not born, you will face all the terrible things. And another kid's response was to say, who told you that where they came from to life was not harsh? Like, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe oblivion was more harsh than life. So, given that nobody knows what oblivion was in your mother's womb or wherever you were before you came to earth, you cannot make a conclusive claim that the world is harsher than wherever you came from. And, like, I've never thought of that thing that way. So, that was a really nice thing to hear, just to push perspective on really, like, how do we know how people feel before they came to the earth for us to even make a conclusive claim that, ah, the earth is nicer or is not nicer? Maybe they came from heaven. Maybe they came from hell. Nobody can tell. And so that's more like a weird thing. Uh, but yeah, I think that gives us one final thing to do before we conclude this podcast. I want you guys to give shout outs to your team members. So your kids that you've trained, you can highlight the most troublesome ones and the most fun ones to be with. Um, but just so that when they listen to this episode, at the latter end, they would hear their names and recognize the shout outs from their team coaches. So let's start with Mace. Yeah, a, a couple of shout outs for your team members. Okay. Um, so what, what I would like to say first is I would like to shout out to my WSDC team 2020 and 2021. The reason yeah. being is because after WSDC 2020 and 2021, these are the people that have been helpful in terms of like coaching, managing, um, yeah. and everything else. So for example, shout out to Metembe. Uh, Metembe is now my team manager. Metembe was in my WSDC team um, yeah. 2020 and 2021. Uh, at the same time, was it was in the academy team since 2018. Um, so he has been there with us like for a while. Uh, shout yeah. out to Providence. Uh, Providence is our project manager right now. And Providence also was in the academy team um, 20, from 2018 uh, and the WSDC team 2020, 2021. And the unique thing with Providence is like, um, we, when I was in high school, uh, when I was finishing my high school, she was starting her high school. Um, uh, it's like, we, yeah, I, I used to see her in debates, um, but she was in a different school. Um, so this was some like oh when I saw her like applying for the national team, I was like, oh yeah, good job, you're doing a very good job. Um shout out to Menzi. Yeah, Menzi is the dinosaur of the team uh, in terms of like experience, but not in terms of age. Um he's very young. Uh he's one of the speakers that started debating for the national team when he was very, very young. Um you know, so since 2020 throughout 2023, he's been in the team, he has kept in the team, I uh, joined the coaching staff. Uh, right now and he is really supportive um and i would also just i, I know he said the only but i'll also say shout out to men's mom men's yeah. mom is so supportive in everything that men's is doing i talked yeah. to i've been talking to men's mom since 2020 and she has always been supportive if you go to our facebook post right now if there's something that we post the first person to comment is men's mom 
she has always been supportive and this is what yeah. makes me so unique because she comes from a supportive warm to say even if you debate for four years no one really like puts you down because there's yeah. that kind of support that you do have yeah so um, yeah shout out to the 2022 wsdc team yeah the team that broke for the first time at wsdc you guys did a great job um, and lastly, shout out to the 2023 team. You guys have the potential to win, but <laughs> things happen in quarterfinals. But I yeah. know that you guys have, like, you know, a high potential. And I hope you guys do great at university. Um, and also, oh, Muku is going to Columbia University. Uh, wow. So he'll be traveling in a few weeks. Um, and then he's going to be going there. Uh, Menzi, hopefully, goes to Vets. Uh, so they are really going to great universities, and I know they're going to yeah. deliver. So WS, uh, PAUDC, watch out for Menzi. He's coming. He's coming. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be waiting yeah. for him. Elisha, <laughs> we are not asking you to wait as competition. We are asking you to wait as a coach. <laughs> Elisha, shout out. Shout out to Team Ghana. So it's your turn. Okay, so um, Team Ghana, uh, yo, the, the list is long because we had like 20 something kids, right? But I'm going to, if I don't call you, I love you. I love you so much <laughs> that I, I will text you personally and, and not just call your name on, on a podcast, you know? Like the, the text is probably more valuable. Joking. But um, 2021, 2022 Team Ghana kids um, have a place in my heart. I was assistant coach then. And now I'm with most of them in, in the university. <clears throat> most of them are debating in the University of Ghana. And most of them are also debating in, like, KNUSD. Um, and I would be seeing most of them at nationals this year, a national championship this year. And I'm so excited to see them. Like, um, I was at the crowd open last year and all the kids that were in the finals were people that I trained before and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting very old. When I say the finals, I mean the novice finals. So yeah, they remind me of how old I'm getting. I'm going to start the shout outs with my WSDC team, Golda, um, Rebecca and Adam. Um, you guys are amazing. And I'm really excited about the fact that you have another year um, or, or even two for Rebecca um, to do WSDC again. I think that you guys would do amazing things, not just at WSDC, but in the debating world, if you choose to stay. And that's something that makes me extremely excited about the future of the Ghanaian debating space. Um, we took some kids to uh, the USA. Oh my gosh, you guys, you guys put me through it. <laughs> <laughs> Both in good, in a good way and some bad ways. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to hate on you guys, but I can't wait to see you guys in the university. I think January next year, it should be fun. Um, yeah. I'm going to go through their names really, re like real quick. Um, Heneku, Jimmy, those two guys are from Presec, my school. I just had to point that out. Um, Michelle, um, Nanaya, Brendo, um, Oscar, um, and um, Wilona, and then finally, Kwesi Kunedo. Great guys. You've been a blessing to work with, and I can't wait to see you all in the university still debating. I don't have kids coming to World, um, sorry, PAUDC, who I trained this year, but I have kids coming to PAUDC who I trained a couple of years ago. So I'm going to say to Macy's kids, they should also watch out. We'll meet you in Togo. All right. Uh, Masharia. Shout out to so we are doing shout outs so you can do shout outs to your WSDC team and maybe the people that you work with just so that when they listen to the latter ends of this episode they would feel some glimpse of appreciation from from their coaches as well. Yeah, I think biggest shout out to the comb, uh, the people we work with with the team that's Chantel Mukabi and Michelle Adika. Those two people yeah. are amazing. Those two women are Mbokodos. They're strong. They 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 were amazing. Never had a more seamless crew. So I think those two deserve all the praise. To our team, Jeremiah, Joy, and uh, Keith, and Natasha, and Kausa in her absence. We had a team captain, Kausa, who was unable to make it. Very strong speaker. Oh, okay. And I think yeah. they were all amazing to work with. Despite them not being serious half the time, 
I think we still had the best and the most amazing trip uh, to Vietnam. So we we love you all. And shout out to the whole Kenyan circuit because we are not on the African circuit. It's hard to believe that any of this is achieved as an individual unit. Yeah. I think the circuit does a lot of work to shape who we are. So shout out to everyone in Kenya, East Africa, and also in Africa. And yeah, everyone who helps out the team. So yeah, that's my shout out. Awesome. Um, just finally, shout out to Team Nigeria, Team Uganda, Team Morocco, and all other um, WSDC teams in Africa who are doing amazing work to develop um, the WSDC aspect of African debating as well. So, yep, um, this brings us to the end of another amazing episode of the Shaft Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this ad adventure as much as we did and um, now before we part ways we want to extend our deepest gratitude to our remarkable guests who made time to share their valuable insights with us today um, as you can see their passion their expertise and their insights have been very very immense in the contributions that they've given now if you loved what you heard and you want to stay connected be sure to subscribe to the shaft podcast on your favorite podcast platform and also make sure that you give us feedback so we can grow and improve. Um, as we bring this episode to a close, remember that curiosity knows no bounds. The pursuit of knowledge is always endless. And keep exploring, keep learning, keep pushing the boundaries of your understanding. Join us next time for another amazing episode. And um, we've had a lot of fun on this uh, episode. We hope that we send our message across and see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.